Hey everyone. <laughs> uh, that sounds a lot like Sean from uh, Sean and Jen. Uh, today we're going to be playing Shinobi Do uh, Way of the Ninja on the PlayStation 2. We're not just playing it, we're speedrunning it on very hard for true ending percent. It's going to be pretty cool. Let's, let's see how this goes by. So there's like a bunch of loading screens at the start of this run that we're going to kind of skip through. So you won't see a bunch of gameplay for a while. Past these loading screens, we're going to move to the tutorial. So this run ended with a in-game time of 2 hours 43 with a overall play time of about 3 hours 30, something like that. Uh, that currently would be the world record. No one else has really entered anything in that category yet. Uh, and there's no video evidence for anyone doing this particular category yet. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, let's see what sort of weird strats we use. Uh, when I did this run, uh, this is post commentary, by the way, when I did this run initially, the first time it actually happened, I could not, uh, get it recorded. Wait, no, I, what I meant to say, sorry, was, um, on the day that I did this first run, um, this run that we're watching right now is actually the second run of the day. I already did one. Um, the mm, seen by the castle. The press channel. the triangle button when I get close to an enemy. If the enemy does not what? see me, then I move the right analog stick to look around. By pressing the R3 button, the camera switches to first yeah. person view. Escape is sometimes a necessity. That was pretty good. I remember now. Holding the circle button lets me run like the wind. Oh, we kind of went uh, a little slow there. Yeah, if I, I ever forget how to do something, <laughs> I can always check the controls and. Yeah, it's it's all right, you know. Um, uh, this run, I, this run had a lot of mistakes in it, and that kind of makes me feel a little, you know, <laughs> some type of way. But it's cool. Uh, I think it's fine that it has mistakes because that just means the next time we attempt this run, we know places where we can kind of uh, save time by really just sort of tightening up gameplay. And if you're not familiar with Shinobi Do the Ninja, this game came out on the original PlayStation 2. Uh, it was mostly a European and Japanese release, so uh, any sort of American viewers who sort of look at this might be a little confused on what this actually is. Um, I know for many people, this game is a bit of an oddity, and you're more likely to be familiar with uh, the Tenchu series. Um, I've been told offhand that some of the people that worked on this game were actually the original devs from the first Tenchu on PS1. Uh, not Tenchu 2 or uh, um, uh, Ten Wrath of Heaven. I think that's the one on PlayStation 2. Um, so what? yeah, where you'll find like a lot of the differences it? in the way this plays. Uh, it, it, it'll be the way it separates I'm itself from the Tenchu. Too. Understand this, it is made what by is many people is? from the original dev team. Uh, yeah, we're doing a lot of manipulation on these guys. Uh, that was pretty clever. I'm just gonna take his body and move him to the corner. If I really wanna do what I think I'm supposed to do in this run, which is I wanna sort of spend a bit of time cleaning up this initial area of uh, bots. Um, uh, minions, <laughs> enemies, I should call them enemies because that's how the game recognizes them as enemies. Uh, this is a very interesting thing. Normally I throw the shuriken at the wall, but instead I bounce it off the floor, sort of creating a sound. Uh, this sort of projects the guy to move towards that little dip. Uh, oh wait, no he does. Oh actually, yeah. He just sort of goes back to his position. Yeah. Uh, this was really quick thinking on my part. I kind of realized that the uh, rooms over here were going to have an extra person. So uh, dealing with her was really swift. Uh, we haven't been caught yet, so that makes this run looking good. Um, picking up the loot here, that's pretty useful. You want to spend the first bits of this run picking up loot. Yeah, watch me uh, play around in the doors. Yeah, that little roof exit is actually quite tricky to get accurately. And uh, me rolling down it onto the floor surface there was not intentional. Yeah, that was just a bit of uh, missed inputs on my part. 
so there's nothing by that well that's normally a spawn point that's what you see me doing um, making sure I can collect geckos and weeds so I've done all the uh, looting that was necessary for this stage checking inside that room to see if maybe there might have been secret loot uh, there wasn't which is good I don't believe loot actually spawns in that room, and I'm going to refer to that room as the merchant's bedroom. That is the merchant's bedroom. Uh, or the, the merchant's lounge, actually, I think is a nicer name. We got 100% on that one, of course we did. Uh, that mission's called I Need Your Help, we know how to do it every time. Another loading screen. So what I'm going to talk about is essentially what true ending percent means, because that must be a little unusual it's not a very familiar term for like a lot of people who play games but for speedrunners uh normally um uh the percentage ref uh refers to beating the game with uh any minimum percentage oh wow i'm explaining <laughs> I didn't even actually find a way to make my commentary a bit more succinct, uh, succinct, succinct, uh, during periods of, um, uh, a lull. So yeah, we're looting right now. We need a loot. Whew. Why do we need a loot? You may be wondering. We need a loot because we need to get the true ending meditation trigger. So how do you trigger the true ending percent trigger? Essentially, what you need to do is you need to do enough missions in the game so that uh, the reputation you have with one of the three daimyo that you can accept in-game missions from uh, are all between the percentages of 3 to 5%. Within that range is where you're going to find yourself necessary. That was honestly such a weird decision. I just put money in, one, in my L2 uh, top spot which is it, it's it's really unfortunate because i didn't realize at the time that um uh money doesn't actually get carried over once you complete a mission you have to empty uh all your money as soon as the mission is over uh once again i'm attempting to look in the merchant's lounge to see if there was any loot i can find uh loot does not spawn in the merchant's lounge so I've done the looting of this area. Uh, there's about, let me say, three, four looting spots on most times. Whew. You really don't have to uh, panic like I did just then. You actually have a lot of time to run across the uh, outside um, roof covering onto that balcony to get the execution. Here we're going to try to execute this guy through the wall. Uh, this is unfortunate because I should have probably tried to find a way to do the quick execution instead of the uh, long execution like that. That's That just cost me time. Yeah, uh, you use the jump with the um, parcel on your back as a way to quickly go through doors that require a little animation so it's technically faster in fact i believe it's faster when you're holding these large objects to constantly keep doing jumps and that is how you sort of increase your average speed without having any speed potions so that one's 100 percent again um we're gonna empty out our inventory uh you generally want to empty your inventory every two missions. Uh, generally, two missions are enough to fill your inventory with enough gear. Um, so that on the third one, you wouldn't be able to do it. So how do you get true ending percent on one of the Shinobi Do speedruns? Essentially, you get true ending percent by doing missions in a succinct order. Succinct? Succinct? order of one two three one two three with one being ichijo two being akame and three being sadame uh you do each one of these in uh 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 without 
uh, skipping a beat, and you will find yourself having some sort of arrangement uh, by the first sort of marker in the game to be something like 40% Ichijo, 29% Akame, and 29% Sadabe. Uh, that's it for me. Huh? Wow, that was fucking ridiculous. So, you probably didn't realize what I did. Um, I put Must have the box down, ran into the box, and by the virtue of running into the box, what I did then was trigger the noise activation. So, those goons ended up hearing me. <laughs> I moved so f deep inland that I actually didn't even realize where I was uh, position-wise. I almost quit the mission. Uh, here we are still looting. Uh, and um, there is one other run of Shinobi Do on uh, YouTube. Uh, well, I should say maybe there are two documented runs on YouTube. Uh, those runs are done by our Australian hero, the Feral Demon. Uh, one of the people that actually convinced me that Shinobi Do is a game that is uh, very possible to be speedrun. Oh, yes, um, I'll fight. Fight for my life, wife, and watermill. <laughs> fight for my wife, life, and watermill. <laughs> Your watermill, uh, buddy. I, I'll, I'll have you know that uh, we all pay for that watermill. So, this was probably a moment to actually use the box tech where you knock the box in order to create a noise. The box, I believe, would have made a smaller sound than what I actually do attempt, which is to do a jumping attack. Yeah, so that's triggered a bunch of these guys to come out. Now, I couldn't have left in that instance because I would have been spotted by the guy who's staring at. So in this instance, I probably can run away. But instead, what I decided to do was go for the kill. What are you doing here? Um, now we've entered a brawl. No! There's going to be another observer. So as we run away, uh, essentially what happens is that I'm going to be attacked. So that's good. This guy wants to attack. It's another roll. Someone out here. Yes. Look at this. Isn't this madness? Isn't this fascinating? Uh, Shinobi Do Where the Ninja has quite a diversity of interactions with the uh, AI. What we're observing here is um, the sort of general experience with combat. Um, you don't want to get caught in the stealth game. I know, what a surprise, unlike those other stealth games that really love it when you get caught. Uh, but yeah, 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 albeit, you Couldn't know, the anything. way this game's combat system on easier difficulty feels, this game is not very good for one-on-one -on -one combat. You find yourself struggling. You can see I'm even trying to avoid staying in a fight. I don't know why I got hit in that instance. I don't know how he is isn't unconscious yet. It's one of these many um, unfortunate things about this game is the, the inevitable glitchiness. <laughs> Look at it go. Woof! Wow. You see, that guy knocked his own friend out. And that moment that he did it, I didn't know where now the sound effect gotcha. came from, so I assumed the guy downstairs was ready for execution. If his friend got. did not attack, if if guard A didn't attack guard B in that instance, I might have actually died and have rendered this whole run void. But uh, we're using our life, drinking a potion, Don't keeping ourselves in the fight. Yeah, throw the shuriken. Uh, shuriken isn't very good. Not at this stage. You see that? I just figured out that I can assassinate these guys uh, by doing a well-placed dodge and then falling with execution. So there we go. 
And that is an experience with combat with multiple opponents. Uh, a lot of combat in this game is going to be you facing multiple opponents. And it's tough. It is very tough. The AI is aggressive. Uh, they have a lot of moves that track. And they do an insane amount of damage. So you're, you know, going to try to avoid getting into most bits of combat. Trying to really end your interactions as quickly as possible. The way I kind of maximize on that in these runs is that what I do is that I throw them on the floor and then I boot them a bunch until they're ready for execution. Then Good work. we finish them You've done well. with one stab in the gut. Um, I want to call this tactic uh, the, old, the old judo stab. The judo stab. I read somewhere that um, the original martial arts known as ninjutsu was actually like uh, some odd derivative that's similar to jujitsu, where it's a grappling style and not a striking style martial art. Which, I mean, I think, I guess it makes sense considering uh, shinobis are meant to be these lethal uh, warriors. Um, but I always just kind of felt that uh, the way movies portray them, they're always doing such cool, like, punches and kicks uh, because that's what ninjas do man they just do like a lot of cool punches and kicks <laughs> uh, that's what this game kind of makes you see but you do have that judo grab that judo uh, flip um, it reminds me of Paul's grab from Tekken the one where he kind of rolls in his back and he throws you behind himself I wish I knew what Paul <laughs> The run structure. So if I have to talk about the run a little bit, I think the run can kind of be, uh, you know, divided into maybe four, six, uh, no, yeah, four, six portions. No. Yeah, get these guys. <laughs> Collecting geckos. There's nothing at this well, which is a shame because, oh wait, no there is. I actually forgot that there was something on this well. Yeah, if you have to loot, you're gonna find most of the good loot uh, by wells. Ah. Ah. Oh gosh, it's so cool whenever you do that backflip after collecting uh, the loot that's sitting on top of it. I don't believe you can really fall down and kill yourself, but you certainly can lose a huge amount of health. Mm. Staring up and down, looking in the ways I can kind of approach this. Uh, this guy's gonna take his sweet time to coming down to kill me. What an annoying bastard. sort of just cleaning out this place uh, this mission was actually to collect one of the first memory fragments uh, so that uh, we can move on to the next stage of uh, um, the the speed run uh, it's actually kind of incredible how it's managed to turn into uh, this mission where I'm actually uh, collecting a ton of loot. Um, I wasn't thinking when I actually did it like this, what I, I was going to be collecting loot on this instance, but uh, I'm really happy that I actually went forward with it, because... I ended up using a bunch of this 
um, to uh, power the run effectively. With the Asuka gone, Akame will rule. With the Asuka gone, Akame will rule. With the Asuka gone. Oh boy. So, what is being attempted here? I do not know. Must have imagined uh, it. This was not a mission that was meant to be assassinate some daimyo. Uh, there's no need to go assassinate the daimyo. I need to probably start considering what I'm doing next. But, uh, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, I guess. Uh, because, um, well, we've, we've come for blood. And we're gonna get it, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, take that guy's head off. That execution is one of the best. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, he missed it. Oh, he missed it. Uh, it's always funny. This happens quite a lot whenever I'm looking for the loot room upstairs. I will search left, then right, then left, then right. And finally, I found it. There we go. Here's a loot room. Uh, you always guaranteed at least four items most of them are rare items with good value every now and then you can get salmon one of the most valuable uh sale items you find in the game they are sold for 700 gold each that is the minimum sort of reward you get normally for doing some of the most difficult levels in the game here i am putting this down trying to get the last bit of loot there we go. That health mushroom, I hope, was worth it. Alright. And we weren't caught the whole time. Uh, you sent the recipient immediately. Thank you. And then we skip the cutscene. Uh, Buyakasha. That's what we do. <laughs> uh. Alright. It's actually good I didn't go for mission scrolls instead. We're gonna be emptying out the inventory. For a few seconds I was really deciding what I was gonna do with that last health potion. Am I gonna put it inside the inventory or am I gonna take it with me in the next mission? I forgot what mission I had to do next. That's to be a Kami. So we're gonna be doing a Kami mission now. Uh, deliver the bow design seems kind of annoying in honesty. It really does. So, we're gonna do it anyway. In hindsight, I actually don't even think it's necessary to do them in the order that I'm doing. Um, if I actually attempt, th if when I attempt this again, I'm actually gonna just do the easiest missions, the quickest ones, then proceed to in the final portion of the game, then balancing the reputations. This won't be easy. This won't be easy. <laughs> I do love that British accent. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite fascinating. So these are the spots I normally like to check. This little divot in the wall here. Normally an item spawns either a gecko or a mushroom. We got a mushroom this time. That's pretty good. We had to, we had to, we had to do it to him. We had to do it to him. There was really nothing that kind of allowed us to live a life without murder. There's another mushroom here. This is the preliminary loot we need. Keeping in mind, this loot is crucial to the run. What that loot is, is uh. Ooh, wow. <laughs> you know, throwing the uh, actual loot tray was a really good idea. But then picking it up again to throw it the second time, not a great idea. Lost a bit of health there. That won't matter too much on our final score. This is not going to be uh, a 100% ranking, but that's fine. 
I think that was a good choice. Going down that pathway, there was there is a window that you can actually go through. But that window is very tight. And the consequences for failing that window can be very dire. This is a very quick execution. Uh, when you play the game really early on, you kind of feel a little bit of trouble doing that particular type of execution from up front. But, uh, yeah, watch this. As he looked right, I went to his left side in order to make sure I didn't enter his extended cone of vision. The way the enemies work in this game is uh, when they are alerted of a threat and they are being cautious. Now on, you to the cone of awareness that they have, uh, it widens. I just had to kill that guy. I just wanted to. I'm kidding. I didn't just want to. But uh, I guess I couldn't help myself in the moment. It seemed easy, so I did it. <laughs> it's those real good diagonal jumps that uh, are good because they allow you to carry on your momentum once you land from the jump. Jumping directly forward with the weight actually stops your momentum. It's unusual. I wonder why it was programmed like that. There's many things in this game that, as you, as we played more, we're going to be thinking to ourselves, I wonder why it was programmed like that. That's one of the first cutscenes we get of Usuba and Agea. They are just chilling on that rooftop, being boss as uh, B-words. And... Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. Once that cutscene is done, uh, the one sister's like, can we go down now? And, and the other sister doesn't respond. You know, giving a, that sort of um, energy of like, <laughs> what are you, a weakling? We're going to stand up here and maintain this weird, unnatural pose for another five hours. <laughs> um, so we're just making a bit of money now because we want to start buying some mines. Uh, we're not just gonna buy mine, we're gonna get the map, an item I don't really use, but I buy every time because I have a compulsion. Don't understand it, but I do it every time. I even put it onto the uh, 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 L2 top spot. Kill the barbarian chieftain. I really like this mission uh, because it's one of the ones that I think really kind of exemplifies the uh, the concepts of stealth action in this mission essentially there are uh, a lot of barbarians that sort of uh, stand in position and wander around with a barbarian chief <laughs> this big guy over here who, uh, sort of stays in that spot and uh, he waits for you to murder him <laughs> yeah so this first kill is simple the first kill has to be a little skillful that was actually it um, that enemy walks in a semicircle so as he walks towards you there's a chance he might actually witness you a mid murder approaching this guy directly from the back is important he has a very wide uh, sight uh, radius um, so if you want to sort of avoid being seen by him uh, I'm not avoiding this guy, which I think is quite risky. Uh, we've ended the scenario, but we're going to record in a few moments. Oh. Um, hey, that was actually pretty good. I'm kind of surprised we didn't get caught. <laughs> we're just looting, you know, getting those mushrooms. It's not a bad idea to, once you've sort of gained the aggro of the uh, minions to s actually tackle a bit of loot. Damn, that was absolutely the most ninja thing. Oh, I went for a sprint as soon as the enemy started attacking. <coughs> Going for the sprint actually um, opens up your guard. And when you're that close to an NPC, it's not the most effective. So, throwing the grapple hook actually attached into the trees, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, Swing of those branches can get you up to where you want to be, but in that instance, I didn't get what I wanted. I wanted to do a dodge roll into that enemy to get the instant execution, but it didn't get to pull off. Here I am, going upstairs, 
noticing that I haven't really been able to sort of outrun these guys, so I think I'm about to start counterattacking by placing mines here. Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, the enemies are not pulling the way I want them to. So, ba boom! Look at the health. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really great. Uh, flip this guy over to sort of get him in position and back away. I blow up the bomb while he's still standing. That's a way, a way to essentially guarantee that I'm getting the damage I need. So we travel back and forth to stop his AI from rocking left and right consistently. He went for a charge attack. You can use that as an opportunity to do another flip and then you just go for the immediate execution. Uh, two barbarians actually are still alive, which, you know, is not the worst thing possible. But um, we really, uh, if we wanted to maximize on the rewards we get, killing uh, every barbarian on that field would have been absolutely uh, top stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that was pretty good. I think we got hit like once, actually. So um, here's the second cutscene. This cutscene is the last cutscene that's going to appear for this portion of the game. Uh, the next portion of the game is actually uh, going to sort of begin a little bit after the boss fight that ended my last run. That was really odd that I actually let that cutscene play for that long. Uh, I must have been kind of enthralled in it. <laughs> you know, just sort of watching uh, Happy Tombo and Uzumushi. I uh, just sort of go at it, this sort of straight man, uh, crazy man sort of um, uh, role. Alright, so here we go. This is going to be the first time we're defending the garden. We're emptying our uh, bank account, <laughs> our inventory, because uh, we just want to make sure that in case we do fail this somehow, which it can happen, uh, we're not going to end up losing all those items we picked up in that last level. We want to let them sort of stay in there. At least if we, at least we get robbed, we can get like a we can control what gets stolen from us instead of everything being stolen from us. So, uh, this whole sequence you're going to be watching a bit of the way I do garden defense tech at um, the very hard difficulty. Um, if you watched many people sort of play this game, uh, if you've watched the previous speedrun by our hero, Feral Demon, the Aussie, um, you'll know that uh, on the very easy difficulty, the barbarians don't have a lot of health. So uh, you can just get them with, um, with the sprinting attack or the instant, uh, instant while running attack. Um, On very hard to control, see? We don't have that luxury. The enemies are a little bit tough. And in an odd sort of decision, the barbarians don't have the same level of um, stamina for their um, executions. So if you want to get Chimari Sapo, which is the function where you uh, get the immediate execution, um, in order to do that on a barbarian, you'll know in the last mission all I needed to do was just kind of do the ninja little flip over them and then proceed uh, to uh, press triangle. Uh, you'll be given that option immediately. But you have to do something a little bit extra. You'll kind of notice me flip them over and then give them one boot. That boot is what makes the difference. Yeah, catching these guys when they're mid-run is sometimes very tough. That's the, really, that's the god throw. When you can throw the axe, and then in the process of them uh, sliding towards you, they're still a little bit too high, so the game calculates them as standing, and then you get an immediate uh, uh, front-facing execution. So I went for a slash, and you kind of see the results you get for uh, the slash. I think it's still an effective technique at this difficulty to sort of sprint at uh, barbarians and do slash, but I think it's just not as controllable, especially if you get involved in a, in a huge brawl with many barbarians at once. I tend to find that uh, I end up getting hit, so this, this is how I keep it manageable and controllable.
so we forgot what mission we did. Uh, it was a Tame. So we need to do a Sadame one now, if, in case we're paying attention. Wait, no, it was a Sadame, so now we're doing an Ichijo. I wasn't paying attention. Ha! <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, we didn't actually get anything uh, from those barbarians. We weren't doing anything. But we're gonna buy some more mines before we start uh, the rest. Um, there isn't like an actual set of mines that I know is optimal in order to do these runs. I've done them like a bunch of times, but I haven't done them enough to make it like a science where I can really sort of uh, mathematically calculate how much money I need exactly to sort of save on time. There's a lot of experimentation that still goes on whenever I do runs. It makes sense considering, you know, the times are still like in these huge lengths of um, three hours plus. Give us raw flesh. Wow, that's creepy. Absolutely. So we are doing a repeat of the previous mission we did before. Um, I've always wondered if there are like many slight differences in the mission. Uh, duplicates. So each one of the daimyo are able to duplicate a mission. Uh, style and uh, the structure, if you want to describe it like that. Like the mission details. They can have duplicate mission details uh, with um, with a, with a varying amounts of difference in the mission description. You know, these will be things like um, execute the merchant, uh, kill the samurai general, uh, uh, kill a barbarian chieftain. Um, they all kind of. Um, have the same basic play. Um, if I had to like really inspect this game closer, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there are like these little tiny variations in enemies' uh, patterns, or the way they walk, or the way, um, the way they're placed, which areas they're placed in. It'd be fascinating if you know the developers were trying to make commentary. As, as what kind of leaders the daimyo were. Depending on like, uh, the way they place their units. Do they have units uh, by the front door? That could mean they want to control who goes in and out. Um, do women uh, walk the streets at night randomly? Possibly. Uh, because, uh, you know, the, the area still has um, uh, people, young ladies who are still out in a boot. This is probably not the best idea. Oh, I made it work though. <laughs> the way the camera zooms in as soon as you're about to stop the execution. Zoom. Oh gosh, the way this animation is. Unbelievable. There I go, that's the uh, barbarian kill, and uh, it's good night to that boy. Leave your, destiny to me. Leave your destiny to me. Hey Becky, I'd just like recording some commentary. I'd just like recording something that sounds lovely. Mmm, 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 shit. Fuck. Here's the Usa Here I come. Let's go, let's go. And she picks it up. Unbelievable. 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 I knew it would happen. I gotta be honest, I did know it was going to happen, dead. but I made it happen anyway. Found them yet. <laughs> we don't have too many options in this situation right now. Uh, kind of standing ready? at the edge, we're surrounded. Found uh, but this, this is absolutely yeah. the god play. So, realizing that uh, she's trying to avoid being grappled and thrown into the bridge, I then go for the attack and all in one. There we go, that's it. It's all done. Easily accomplished. It's nice when the boss fights can go that kind of smooth. It's annoying when they have to go on forever. 
Uh, especially the way these bosses can really treat you like crap, I tell you what. You can just get swarmed by the Usuba and Egaya clones, and the amount of like projectiles they throw is absolutely oppressive. You cannot make a single decision without really endangering yourself. Give us that 100%. Okay, so if I had to describe that, I will describe that as the easy first part. Now, this is going to be portion 5. No, portion 2 of a five part speed run. So the parts go, the easy first part, uh, the introduction into the ninjas, uh, alchemy, talks of peace, and then the final part. So right now we've broken down the first easy part. Now we're doing intro into ninjas. So at this point in the game, uh, we've only really had to deal with, you know, the samurai units of the particular daimyo. Uh, these are all basically the same type of unit because they've never, they haven't really diversified into their different enemy types with projectiles or high level stats. But uh, what we do have currently now is a little bit more than what was that just now. So uh, here's an introduction of a bear, uh, an NPC that probably wasn't available until just now. Here's a little skip in case you ever do this level. If you want to sort of get to the top without uh, having to go around in a circle. Uh, you just sort of um, jump off the side of the wall, throw the gravel hook, get brought back to the wall, and do it again. This is a way to check to see who's upstairs. I can't see him currently. So we get up here, which is actually great tech, and that should allow us to get the instant kill. And... Normally quite quick. In case you don't need to spend too much time getting involved in uh, fighting enemies and the such, we've also sort of reduced the amount of looting we do. Um, on Dandela Peak, Congo Pass. Sorry, that's Congo Pass. Uh, one of the problems with Congo Pass is that there's not too many great items. You're probably the best thing you can find. So Roku, Roku, Rokudo Valley. That's Rokudo Valley. Okay, so, yeah, I always forget what the names of these arenas are, it's, it's, um, it's one of those odd things that no matter how many times I keep playing these missions, and I've played thousands of them, I still keep getting the names right in the Okay, so, we are buying more bombs, this is a frequent way to save time. So... We're doing another bear hunt. If it goes like the last bear hunt, we're going to be really easy. So we're just going to go back on topic about what it means now in this portion of the game. We're avoiding really having to deal with the amount of bullshit this portion of the game gets because there is a real ramp up in difficulty. The way this uh, portion is. Enemies are stuck. And you're dealing with a new type of threat called the Shinobi. Shinobis are so frustrating okay, so this one is a really weird uh, dynamic. What's gonna happen here is that uh, I need to get in between the uh, lookout points of these guns so I can then go upstairs and uh, kill the bear. I've been too long. I got caught. Hey, what's happening? The enemy! They even got the Asuka <laughs> Oh yeah, that was an absolutely skillful one, wasn't it? <laughs> up we go. That's it. Let's get up here. Where's the bear? Where's the Oh, there's the bear. It's up there. What? It's a little bit of looting. Sorry, so I actually need to check the loot. What we're looking Where for at this you? point here is every now and then you get the occasional spawn in the jitsu. And I love collecting. I can't let you what are the fascinating things about this game? Like, because of the scarcity of resources, you don't really have the opportunity to play around with ninjutsu in the way you would. Um, you know, many of the other sort of outcomes. Ah, that bear is just munching them. Yes. 
all out season. Smack him. And smack him. Wow. You know, oh, he just throws straight into the ocean. These soldiers are so great. Fighting this monster. Watching their friends die. One Whee! That guy was in flying. You know, watching your friends die one or the other like this. I can hear you! I'm sure if you look through this, this would be some of the most painful enemies you could ever deal with. Gotcha! And then there was only one left. And he was pouncing. Here's the tech. Wait for him to rush, sidestep, and then kick him off. Boosh! It's that easy. Leave your destiny to me. <laughs> so, oh, what ends up happening? Because, unfortunately, you see, your boy here makes some really, really silly mistakes when he plays this game. Really, really, really silly mistakes. And, uh, we did the spear hunt. And we entered this because we believed we had items, but we lose it. We didn't. This is the first time we're checking the actual uh, stats. And we're realizing that uh, every, it's not balanced. It's not balanced at all. Uh, that's fine. Um, I, should only, I should be realizing now. Um, I should be now realizing commentary. It doesn't actually have to be balanced at this point. The reputations kind of fascinating. Cause like the reputations also kind of define what kind of title you get. So if you do a lot of delivery missions, your reputation and your title yeah. are really good, and you get the title of uh, fast delivery man or lightning fast delivery man. I need to make man. a nice girl. <laughs> it's the same thing if you uh, do a lot of uh, total destruction mission. You know they call you a human weapon. Or assassin, and then you know, there's like Shinobi Grandmaster. Uh, what you know, there's, a, there's a quite a few things. I actually want to make a I want to compile like a list of all the little special names you get when you play the game. I think it'll be a fun little bit of information, a little bit of trivia to play around with. I've always wished there was someone who can just like unpackage this game, you know, really break it apart, show you all the pieces that make it. And, uh, I just want to sort of look at it and, and then, like, kind of just sort of understand exactly what kind of monster this game is. And this game is a monster. This game is a weird mess of features and, 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 and dead ends and, and odd physics-based whatevers. <laughs> it's such a weird game. So, we thought the item we needed to steal was here, but I believe we're just looting instead. The rooftop can always have like a lot of items. It can, it can. I don't know why I had to preface that with always. It's a funny bit, a little bit of language. So, we didn't notice this until just now, but the guy that's in that room died. He straight up ate something on the floor and died. It was like that. Here I'm collecting more money. I don't know why though. I actually don't know why I'm collecting money. That is, it's so unusual. Uh, taking a brief moment to pause and consider what sort of, <laughs> what sort of mental trauma happened upon me before I encountered this affair. And I wait for the right moment. There it was. He looked right and ah. him left. Learn. I must be focused. I must be focused. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. So normally whenever you do this portion is four missions you have to do and then you fight Zaji. In those four missions, um we should be 
at this point, I believe we have enough items to actually create the necessary components for our special mushroom uh, up there. But I always, I always get like an abundance because you know, I, I like to have safe months. So I actually didn't know where the mission was going to be. So I had to save here. <laughs> I was very, very confused and like, what, what do I do next? Oh, these are my previous times. I'm just saving over the six hour uh, complete time. That one, you know when I got that six hour complete time, I actually thought to myself, this is crazy. I can't believe you beat the game in less than eight hours. <laughs> I used to spend so long playing this game. It would take me forever to get anywhere close to beating this game. And then six hours is like, whoa. I mean, I can actually beat the game and I can have time to, you know, uh, do my dishes. <laughs> I don't have to spend like all oh, bloody day playing the game. Steal packages during street, uh, shipping. Take care of guards all the time throw objects to fry your group. Alright, so this mission, this mission, this mission. This mission is hard. I don't know if you noticed what the difficulty ranking was for that. I believe it was something like 14 pips, a level 14 difficulty. It is insane. The jump in like difficulty this mission is comparatively to uh, everything we did before. Even something like the bear hunt mission. Uh, which is also considered a very difficult mission. That's nowhere close. So this is actually where I went wrong the first time I did this. So I had this idea in my head that I was going to be standing um, on the little uh, middle bit here that uh, makes up this U, uh, this U bend on the road. Um, big mistake. Big mistake. <laughs> makes no sense. So as soon as I do go up here and I try to send the kunai over the roof. Because first of all, I can't see it because the roof's too long. Second of all, once I get into position to throw it, it looks like I can throw it, but I can't. You know why I can't throw it? It's because the game has a glitch where as soon as I throw something, I'm going to get detected by the AI. I believe the throwing animation actually triggers a, um, a change in your model. So when you start standing, Wow, that was Charlie! risky. That was so risky to place that mine there. I wonder why I took such an unusual risk. I guess I must not have been feeling well. <laughs> uh, oh, it's tense. I can't see other ninja are coming through. I just have a strike in the Two kick and I pass out. Ooh, watch it. That's it. I place the mine. I'm not looking what's behind me. Baboosh! There it is. We all see that happen. Walking backwards. I get surrounded, but this is all possible. Do not place a mine. I know you want to. You can't help yourself. Oh, that was a really good um, side jump. Wow. You know, when I watch that footage again, I'm still surprised I managed to react so quickly to that uh, weird ass uh, enemy spawn. So, we lost a lot of health. And the guy looked really far back, so we basically get a reset on this. Um, which I think is actually kind of unusual. Um, this is a sign of us learning a little bit better about how the game functions. So we've taken that lesson and now we're going to try to... We were, tr we were going to try to learn something. But instead what we ended up uh, let happen was minions came in and then blew up three very expensive mines. Oh, <laughs> These guys are such poses, man. It's kind of funny that whenever you use Where like the um, Heavy Tombow skin uh, or the Uzumushi skin, 
uh, they always talk about being like true ninjas. It's like it's this really um, funny thing post. about the game's uh, AI just being really petty and jealous. Damn! Wow, that was like almost like a skill shot. I brought him up here. Whenever shit like this happens, when an enemy gets blown up and he flies all the way to a rooftop and he's not dead, I'm always laughing my ass off because he's about to get up and he's like, oh, "Who the fuck are you?" And then a baboosh. Uh, how are you not dead? How are you not dead? Wow, I went for the grab mid attack. It's funny that the attack has high points, but you get, but there's no. Oh my gosh! Look at that ev evasive bullshit. If this enemy. This is absolutely the most dastardly thing I've seen myself attempt. Okay, so I throw one. I wasn't even looking at how many shuriken I had. I only had two. I only had two shuriken. And I knew I had to make the shot. Uh, I didn't know that. Oh my gosh. I only had 21. You got lucky. Next time, I'll Next have you. Next time, I'll have you. Do you want to make these really amazing, amazing plays where sometimes I'll be, uh, I've just stolen the package from some enemies and then <laughs> I'll walk into my own bombs. You know, I didn't even notice that bomb the first time I actually went through that. It was only at this point now that I noticed, hmm, I didn't check for bombs when I was walking. Send that right away. So there we go, that's the first time... That's the that's the first time that cutscene is appearing. Oh my gosh, I, I I really had to sort of bungle this run. So far, this run is actually looking pretty good. You know, I'm sitting in my chair thinking to myself, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." I managed to do the old happy tombo murder without too much trouble. I actually forgot what I was doing for like a few seconds. So, the gift giving system in this game is very, very hard. <laughs> There's not a lot of information on how it works, but essentially, I'll tell you this. All health potions, when you send them to any one of the rewards, will always generate at least a plus one in reputation. They like said, they like health potions. Doesn't matter the size, it can be small, it can be big, they love health potions. It's a nice mini. How can you forget? You forget every time. No, that's 13. That's difficulty level 13 or 14. So now we're trying to find a mission we can do that's not too intensive. Can be kind of pretty done. In all actuality, we probably should be. We should spend our money on a bunch of health potions and then use those health potions to fund, to give gifts as we continuously accept missions and decline them to quickly end a mission and then move on to the next stage in which um, we can then get alchemy. That's right, folks. I'm not lying. The next stage after this is the alchemy stage. Which, like, you know, if you've seen uh, um, our hero, Feral Dean, the Australian, uh, if you've seen their speedrun, you'll know that, uh, essentially, you have everything you need right there in your hands. You have to just go out there and take it. It's not, that like, it, it's not really like that in the very hard difficulty, unfortunately. Uh, enemies have a lot, a lot, a lot of health, and engaging with them in a one-on-one -on -one fight is very, very tough. Uh, what does make it easier is unlocking the five different strength potions uh, using alchemy and then supplementing that as well by drinking a strength potion and then uh, fighting your enemies. Oh yes, and also throw a potion of madness to uh, Yeah, we don't really do that in this difficulty, so... Um, at least if I did attempt that, which I think is an interesting, like, 
Oh, run. No, no mega bombs. All melee. Run. Where you essentially uh, play this. I don't know, a Bruce Lee ninja. <laughs> That, that's, that, that'll be the, the thing, and like, you don't really use a lot of stealth, you basically fight everyone and everything. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think you can do like truly full percent with that kind of run. Um, but it would be like, um, I don't know, melee only percent. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I guess you have to, I guess like in a run like that you can also use mines. Because I think it'd be fine actually. Trying to think about like, my God, how would you like live life before uh, you get to use alchemy to then um, get yourself all of the health potions? Oh, that was a weird bit of hesitation. I saw that. Like I kind of jumped over him and I waited about a little bit over a half a second, a little bit over half a second, and then I went for execution, getting the full front of stuff. This is such a risky gambit, right? Because I can barely see the enemies. I know he's there. Wow, that was fun. No! Wow, that was so weird, right? Did you see how that guy... Wow! I did the execution on a guy who was standing, and because I attempted it, the guy ends up going flat on the ground and then rising up. And then after that, I then attempt to. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I then attempt to do another roll execution, but that's impossible because for some reason the game just didn't detect that forward roll into the enemy. Like, no. No execution for you, Sunny Boy. Ooh, let's bundle him, let's bundle him. You see, I'm misusing the tech, right? But, uh, I'm gonna start to get, like, a good amount of hits. That's really unfortunate. And then the music starts playing again. How does that miss? This game, I know. <laughs> if I remade this game... Oh, it's time for the Zaji fight. It's time for the Zaji fight. Ah, this fight. You know the way I, I, I bungle it all so perfectly. So how does the Zaji fight work? How does the Zaji fight work? So essentially, he has basically all the moves you have additionally. Zaji likes to... S with all boss fights in this game, you'll notice the bosses will stand completely still in the first few seconds. In that moment, you always take the first strike. Our first strike is going to be a dashing, uh, instant running attack. He's on the floor. You place a bomb by his head, and then you trigger it with the explosive. You go place another one by him. Wow, that was not how it was meant to be. I'm dead. Boom. You see, in that moment, I realized that I made that initial mistake. He came up, and then he started sprinting at me. And I knew that if I didn't explode the bomb, he was going to do an instant wall running attack at me. Um, that happened anyway, even though I tried to blow up the bomb. Uh, instead, what I should have done was I should have watched him kip up and then immediately killed him. He immediately hit him with another uh, instant wall running. Yes, I know. We're back here. Uh, you think, hey, doesn't dying after like completing two missions kind of put you in a position where you feel like maybe the run's dead or something and I think in honesty yeah yeah it does it, it really did feel like the run was dead I was like oh my goodness but uh this is one of those things I guess you sort of come to know a bit more about me is that I'm a little whiny baby and I complain about the slightest thing oh no there's a pee underneath my mattress I can feel it even though there's like 80 stacked on top of each other I am like that. 
I don't know. I think it's appealing. A little bit cute. Like in a, you know, like a little man-childish kind of way. Because people think man-children are cute. Oh, we're doing it again. This mission. So, steal the jewel. Difficulty level 13. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Well, I have like one suggestion. Uh, get good. And don't play like a people. That was a great execution. I came in at such a nice angle too. So now we have lofty ambitions. We're placing an array of bombs. This is good. And we are going to wait for the NPCs to show up. They are very close by too. Oh shit. What are these Get over here. Oh Out of my, way. my lord. You guys have to make everything so goddamn annoying. Excuse me. On the floor, sunny boy. Do you mind if I kick you for a bit until I can uh, execute you? Yeah, thanks, bro. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> that little sound glitch. Oh, it's shocking. You know, every time you enter combat and that music just sort of goes... Dun -dun. This is the tech. So what you do is that you wait till minions are nearby, and then you throw a, cool, a shuriken oh, wetter standard. It's about to go off. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Watch them stack up. Watch them stack up. Oh, well, nothing. And then, uh, must have been a boosh. That's how. That's the tech. That's how it works. So we're gonna try to. Wow, that's fascinating. I'm out. I'm gonna kill you. I almost never get that dialogue. I actually kind of play this game with the volume, like, sort of removed in most instances. Oh, ninja! <laughs> like a bunch of evil chimney sweeps. Uh, shinobi chimney sweeps. Damn, he literally killed himself. If he didn't attack, he wouldn't have killed himself. How sad. So if you're wondering what I'm referring to by no dodge in that final attack, when fighting the Shinobi Shinobi, <laughs> I know, <laughs> they uh, have a three hit combo, is a left slash, right slash. Oh, how perfectly timed. What's that sound? That's kind of funny how it flew up in the air and just sort of dropped again. <laughs> Now we've got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that was lucky. He just attacked me. I wonder what sort of possesses the AI to make such weird mistakes. So, they don't actually want to follow you that far away from the treasure chest. It was a little foolish of me to think that I could kind of draw them towards where those mines were placed. I'm trying to be. Where the economic. hell are you? Come out! I'm gonna kill you! God damn 
right. Come out now. He's so mad. Couldn't find it. anything. I'm <laughs> Everyone return to your posts. <laughs> Who are you? That's it. I'm quitting. <laughs> Man, you are definitely fighting, my brother. As for you, Brendo, get knocked on the floor. I heard you like bombs. Please do not touch that. I, I, I told you not to touch the mine. Now, if you stand up again, you are so annoying. I'm gonna put this mine here, and you're not gonna touch it, okay? Yeah. Uh, did you see the way he glitched out for a few seconds? Oh, that was unintentional. Yeah. Uh, wow. You got lucky! Incredible. Uh, maybe there's a way to cheese AI by using an attack whilst they're doing it. Once they're on the floor. Floored opponents can be cheesed with mine and a hitting a neutral attack. And you know, we're so close to finishing this mission, all I want to say is compared to the first time we did this, this was leagues, leagues above in, in quality. Yes. I don't know why it took so long to actually respond to this. I'm just wasting time. These are just some, many, some of the many time sinks that um, uh, occurred when I was doing this run. I must have been a little bit tired having a sip of water or something. What do you guys like to drink when you play these games? Do you drink juice? Do you drink chocolate milk? I think chocolate milk is actually really great. You know, I'm pretty old, but like, even at this point, I can't admit... I can't not admit that just mixing a little bit of that uh, modified cow's blood with uh, the synthesized coca bean extract, it tastes delicious. Yeah, I apologize, that was a really weird way to describe chocolate milk, but I always find it's always funny whenever you sort of describe things in the ways they're not meant to be. This run is so long, I'm going to have a shave. That is the sound of my beard for the shade. Hmm? It is absolutely worth it. Yes, yes. Here we are again. It is the bear hunt. And the bear is hunting us. <laughs> the bear is absolutely murdering these goons, these guards. They have no chance of really sort of beating it. Not at this stage. It's kind of sad. It was nothing. There's a cutscene in the game where um, it's I believe a sadomic gets a certain custom for her units, and the sort of NPC that's doing the little dialogue bit, he he does his thing, and then he says. And then say Dame replies with, Oh wow, that's so impressive for a priest. You might as well be a samurai now. Did you see it? I didn't see it the whole time. <laughs> There's a bit of AI manipulation. It's so unusual that instead of climbing over the fence and coming down hill, it calculates to run all the way downstairs to where the hut is and then look for my position around the hut. But it cannot detect that I'm on top of the hut. Here I am just teabagging. Um, <laughs> Man, if I could have a feature in the game, if you teabag this fast, you go from teabagging and you start twerking. It's time for the redemption. Zaji fight, Zaji fight, Zaji fight, Zaji fight, Zaji fight, Zaji fight. So what have you learned since last time? Um, try to manipulate the instant while running attack. Try to manipulate that one. That's going to be a little bit more crucial to the run 
than as first understood. Very close. I placed the first mine, I back away. He picks up the first mine, he bombs himself in the second one. It's not there, I jump off. And I get the second one. Damn, it's so nice when it works out like that. I love when the enemies kill themselves. Saves me a bunch of my time. Who are you? My name is Go. I'm an Asuka. <laughs> so we're still in the second phase. But I believe at this point we should we should be skipping many of these missions. It's a uh, it's a little sad that we won't be skipping many missions. Instead we'll be fighting them. The initial sort of items on selection. Um, I actually haven't figured out uses for all of them yet. And I wonder if they actually do have uses. At some point, I actually think I want to go on like the forums of the game. Think about what it would mean to sort of. Well, I just want to see how other people play this game because I'm always fascinated how other people sort of interact with this game. I think, I think the game is neat, and I think people that play it are neat too. Hmm, I guess I can talk a little bit about the story. So, the story of Shinobi Go is a little bit something like this. Watch me as I push it. So, a very, very, very long time ago, there was an evil wizard. And his name was Gamorant. He was a big SOB, and one day, uh, he stopped. So, the enemies of this big SOB will be Asuka Ninja, um, sealed him up in an ancient sword and put it in a shrine. And uh, this was supposed to keep him out of everyone's hair until the end of time. So at some point, this young foolish shinobi by the name of Go decides that he is going to more or less uh, completely uh, betray all his friends. <laughs> uh, Go gets put under mind control, um, I guess Star Wars style, and uh, <laughs> he um, uh, begins to systematically free this evil wizard from his ancient burial place. Once he's free, he begins to wreak havoc on his ancient enemies, the Asaka Ninja. Go knows the weaknesses of the village, so what ends up happening, they're like, some, somewhat dumb. Um, use explosives? Yeah, he, I think it's like a Kabuto to come like destroy everything. It's like these sort of metal men. They're like big and that armor. And it's over. So yeah, uh Gamoran then gets I I don't know how he's doing all this before he's free. But like yeah somehow he manages to like get Go to be evil and then at the last moments when Go is like, oh no, I've done all these evil things. I've betrayed my family and they're and they're invading my home. What ends up happening is that uh, he decides to stop Gamoran by getting a scroll. And the scroll has like how it has the information Gamoran needs in order to be immortal or something like that. So then uh, Go then. What, what, what is he? I think he like throws away the scroll. But. Uh, and Gamoran's like, oh, that's a pity. I guess I'll just have to kill you then. And then. Uh, 
he's like, why would killing me give you back the scroll? And he's like, oh, no, no, no. It's not that, it, that's not how it works. When I kill you, I will be taking your soul, and your soul is going to have the information I need. So, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to take out your soul, and I'm going to read it like uh, like a hard drive from the computer. So, during the process, well, like the whole soul feeling thing, Gamoran gets kind of like stopped midway, so like goes souls out of its out of his body, and it's like crystallized into like a crystal, yeah. and then it gets shattered by one of his. I think it's Saji that shatters it and saves Go's life, and then Go wakes up after surviving the explosion, going downstream, and wakes up with no memories, and he's like. What happened? What did I do? Who am I? And then the arrow message gets sent to him. Um, and I don't know why arrow messages are being sent to go. I believe I think it's the cat that sets all this up. Yeah, the cat sets up all the like. I think the cat sets up like the the basic gist of the game. Why are we saving again, you might ask? We're saving again because I'm doing some experimenting mid-game. Alright, I was looking like an hour five. So, if this was... You know, if this, if this was compared to the current world record for any percent, uh, I would be no way close. No way close to actually getting any, any of that time. Uh, you know, I'm still in like the second fifth of the game an hour five come on son so yeah that's essentially what happens to go he now then reads like a letter that's sent him by this kind of <laughs> odd mailman that lives in the area that sends you all this mail and um we have to stay alert Gio that i'm uh, counting on you crow can i make it lives in some other location so, we're about to watch is me attempting to sort of experiment with export missions to see if it's possible if I can pull them off at this difficulty with such low resources. Um, the answer is no, because I'm not that good at the game. And the answer is also, okay. why are you doing that? Why don't you just skip all these missions? Because the next bit of the game is coming soon. You'll just get out for me very quickly. When Go spins around, he's not listening to me. Oh no, Go! Look, his ear pods are in. He can't hear us. <laughs> hey, it's time of a... You know missions are hard? Escort missions when you're fighting against Taraba Ninja because they all have rocket launchers with infinite ammo. Don't let them get away! Taraba. I found an intruder! Oh, Stay there. Uh, what's happening? Uh, oh, God! It's like anything can happen at any point. Watch it. Oh, you could have been nuisance. It's basically open. You see, as uh, we were kicking ass, uh, what we didn't realize is that our house was being moved from space. Look at this. I blew it out of the at the end, thinking it, like the splash damage would heal the boat, but it didn't. It was terrible. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm learning my lesson now that I actually don't actually need to engage in these missions at all. Instead, what I should be doing is I should be skipping these missions. I should be taking whatever's reconnaissance, collecting loot and leaving, and then skipping every other mission if possible. But I love the missions. I just love playing this game. I actually think it's so fun. It is such a fun gameplay loop. I'm just thinking about which mission I'm going to take next. It's really silly. I actually really wasted my time doing this. <laughs> but you know, I'm having fun. I don't know why that 
never the realization never really came to me. I I, I was somehow convinced in, in 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 like the deepest part of my head that in order for like the next story missions to trigger, you need to be at like a certain level of like reputation with any one of the daimyo. I don't know why I thought that was the case. Because I don't believe that's actually how it works anymore. There we go. The realization is dawning upon me. I have been wasting my time doing missions. It's time to act smart and to be quick. There it is. Wow, what a surprise. You should save. You should save if you know what's good for you. Find the glowing stone. Asuka Village. Difficulty 4. Damn, this man truly believes that he is special. That somehow the rules do not apply to him. <laughs> Let's see if he's mistaken. <laughs> uh, well, the Matrix were at least two years old after this game came out. I'm trying to think about what sort of connection this game would have had with the Matrix. Oh my goodness, the compression, the artifact, this video quality is astounding. Another instant while getting attacked. We're waiting for him to be hit by. Oh no, actually, that was pretty smart. Get away from that. He's gonna run that bomb. Oh, that was a good place to get that guy. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? Good grief. Are you ready to repeat missions? It's this kind of stuff that actually just made this run go on for so much longer than it should have. <laughs> but I think it's fine. Um, you know, when that fight ended, I think there were some lessons to be learned. One of them definitely was use those unconscious fears, use those unconscious fears, use those unconscious fears. If there's any a time to be using those fears, it was then and there. So, I believe now we've actually learned our lesson about how this all functions. It was at this point I kind of realized that um, it didn't really matter too much about the status of my reputation with the feudal lords at this point, because a lot of it was going to get salvaged, a lot of it was going to get fixed coming up into uh, the uh, rest of the game. We're coming close to the the end of the the second fifth. All right. 
glad they have collected mushrooms. It's an interesting choice. There's a philosophy to, uh, to, uh, um, on how you choose what missions to quit. You, if you want to maintain balance, what you should do is look for the feudal lord with the highest amounts of respect, quit his mission, and then for all the other feudal lords, give them gifts to maintain height. Another mission quit. It's like this. Yeah, I feel like at this point in the game, right, it it it, it really it really is transitioning away from like a pure raw shinobi do gameplay to being like skips, tricks, and bullshit. Fail two missions, get the glowing stone. Did he save? No, he did not. Why didn't he? Because he believes. <laughs> he truly believes. Doing some looting in this area. You're guaranteed a salmon in almost every in almost every iteration of the way this Asuka village spawns in, but um, there's been occasions I've seen the salmon not spawn, which I've also thought is bullshit. So this is going to be the next Kabuto fight, which um, I think is really, really odd. I used, to, I used to find this fight very easy. I need to watch some of my old footage to see how I used to do this fight. Because, like, the way I do it now is absolutely ridiculous. I, it, it's so much more complicated now, the way I do it. So, I need to go for the instant. Oh my gosh. In, <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> What's the matter? Those thrown heavy items do It's confused. So lucky I did. So lucky I did. It's really good when the fight ends that way. You know, essentially, uh, there were so many risky moments to actually do what I needed to do. No matter, you are nothing but an empty shell now. Uh, letting letting cutscenes play again, wasting time. I love wasting time. It's actually, you know, uh, if it's not um, if it's not thing precious things like gold, I love wasting time. Hallelujah, we've unlocked alchemy. Welcome to the third portion of the game. This is essentially where the game's gonna get really, really fucking wild. Um, we are going to create what is known as Follow Me at Joseph T. Jones on Twitter, which I recommend you do. Follow me at Joseph T. Jones on Twitter. Also follow Ertl slash underscore uh, Ertl on uh, Twitter as well. And follow uh, Robin Sparkles on Twitter too. Uh, those are all cool people. Yeah, I might even just go along and start talking about my town and give you that there's just so many good people that you should be following right now because if you don't, you're missing out on some real, real good content. So, what is this alchemy tech? What is the alchemy tech? Alright, so alchemy essentially is going to be like this. We are creating 11 special mushrooms in order to... You're creating 11 special mushrooms. Those 11 special mushrooms can be made using the pot seeing wind uh, by making three items in a row all equal three. So the way the rows are divided is A, B, C, D, E, 
ABCDD, and um, it can be A B C B C D uh, C D E. It can be any of those three permutations, and if you and just like that, you make a special mushroom. This plant caltrop already has all the stats lined up, so you can tell the game already detects that. It asks me, "Do you want to take a special mushroom?" Out? That's two. When this run was being done, our initial looting only gave us something along the lines of two special mushrooms. We actually want to use a lot more, so we have to make up about nine special mushrooms because of that. Uh, those geckos of speed are so useful. Look at that. Another one. So that's three. It's so three down, six more to go. And this is what we do. This is essentially what we do. We make 11 special mushrooms. And you're going to see essentially what those 11 special mushrooms do after this. Um, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the mathematics. It is a little fascinating how long it takes to do this. We're still going. We're still going. So in this moment, now that you know we're really sort of hyper focused on one bit of the game, I want to talk a little bit about some thoughts about my philosophy on speedrunning. Hey, don't leave the room. I'm kidding. So. Speedrunning is awesome. I don't think anyone's gonna deny that. What I do want to sort of talk about though is how we sort of come to conclusions of the validity of runs. Which run is a is which run is a good run and which run is a bad run. So Here's what we're thinking about, right? If you play this game, Shinobi Do, on emulator, I don't know what like everyone's experience with playing on emulator, but every time I play on emulator, the actual process is never accurate. It does not feel like the real like the original game. And I feel like, oh, so 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 frustrated playing it. I can't do any of the particular sort of uh, like movement techniques that I love sort of executing and it just leaves me sort of wanting more so I, I always have this idea in my head that playing this game on emulation is like playing an, not a true version of it like an untrue version of it so whenever I see people play it and play an it, I feel like that's not the game, but I mean, it is the game, of course it's the game, what, why would it not be the game, does it not have all the same pieces as the game, and then I thought to myself, is a game the sum of its parts, or is a game a little bit more than the sum of its parts, the amount of times, you know, people can play, um, I don't know, chess, and you know, it's chess, you know, it's chess, of course it's chess, or you can play something like, uh, Paper Scissors Rock. Yeah, it's Paper Scissors Rock. Of course it is. We all know what the experience is meant to be like. But is, is there ever really a moment where you open up a chessboard and you think to yourself, huh, this is an odd version of chess. The pieces are 8 inches tall. It doesn't feel like chess. Of course it still feels like chess. You're, the, the game is not about the pieces. It's about the experience, right? But yeah, unless someone decides to kind of alter what the chess looks like and then they say it's not chess, you'd be like, no, it's still chess. And I don't know if that example really kind of goes to clarifying kind of what I think about runes, but like, whenever I play it on emulator, I think to myself, yeah, no, 
this is kind of like Shinobi Do. It has like all the same pieces, but it just isn't like the game. Because I believe like playing the game comes with like a selection of really, really weird and annoying movement and combat issues. <laughs> So many weird, annoying movement and combat issues. Do, do the weird, do the weird issues make it good or make it worse? And I, I don't know if that really even matters. In honesty, I just know that the game is meant to feel a sudden way. That's kind of how I have it in my head. It's meant to. It's meant to kind of play a certain way, you know? God, I didn't mean it was good. It just like, it's almost like a certain way it's meant to look. I can't get over how much that sounds like like a really heavy fall into the toilet bowl. Just that <laughs> whenever you throw something in there. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah, yeah, that's 10, dude. That's 10. That's 10. You have to make another one. Incrediblis. Incrediblis. Look at him. Basic math is still giving him issues. That's it, that's it. Put it there. Yeah, no, no, you're close. There. Okay. Oh, actually, no, that was better. Damn. Even I sometimes am too smart for myself. <laughs> so, I'm really wasting time. Just sort of reading the text boxes. I don't want to make that mistake when I'm wasting like, a special mushroom. So if you look at what's happening right now, when you put a special mushroom into a even pot, everything goes up plus 10. That is 60 points per mushroom. 60 points. So now we've reached 100 all across. Normally this allows you to take the liver out of medicine. But instead, we're going to avoid doing that because we want to drop the value from 100 across, which is 600, and then drop it to about 595 to about 599. I normally like to put it in that 598 region, where it's either minus 2 or minus 3. So looking at over here, this is a minus 3. Something like a nine, minus 4. So we're going to say no here. And then we're going to use the even rate. This brings it all to 99, 99, 99, 99. And we have Limitless Weapon. That's the first bit. What do you do with Limitless Weapon? Oh, the things you can do. <laughs> Here's the essential, uh, just a bit. Limitless Weapon is a ninjutsu that allows you, in that iteration of that room, in that one instance of that room, every single item that can be thrown and does not shatter, or, that, or does not vanish after a timer, can be used again and again and again. So that means things like learning kanji, things like improve your writing, things like a samurai's tale. You can throw another issue of it, and another one, and another one, and another one, and the game will always give you another one. You can get infinite amounts of them. 99 in every slot, if you wish. <laughs> it's a little excessive, so you probably don't need to. Right now, we're preparing the things we're going to need to get up. We're going to get 10 Gethers, which is probably more like... Eight geckos, what we should actually be getting. It should be eight geckos, not really ten. So we, so we should be getting uh, ten valuable geckos. Then we want to buy speed potion. The 
speed potion is supposed to allow us to throw many of our duplicate items uh, faster than if we just had to do our regular speed. And because we're using limitless weapon, we should have the ability to uh, drink as many speed potions as we need to. Unfortunately, I didn't think about that at the time. No, no, I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking too much about how I'm going to customize this area. How does it work? Well, first you don't select everything. First you go into landscape, select everything, raise it all to the top, drop it four times, go to the closest place in the corner, and then make yourself like a little... Oh, oh right, I was taking off all these traps because... Uh, Waste your time in hindsight now. gonna be how I guide minions to their death. That's gonna be the setup we'll be using for a while until we get the next setup upgrade. Hit the quick save and we're gonna do this without getting the speed potion. I don't know why we left it inside the inventory but beepity boop it's how we dupe. I wish the Ninjutsus had special animations. The I mean, like a little bit more than that. Come on, that was kind of <laughs> that was kind of disappointing. Let's be real. So, step one: acquire currency. And how does one acquire currency? Uh, through the magical process of selling salmon. Yes, it's true. Salmon, the most valuable consumable one can muster seven hundred dollars each and they'll get them fresh there's no time there's no bad time to buy salmon I don't know if salmon has really any utility outside of just being a sale item I always thought about maybe it being some way to attract a bear's attention a little bit stronger than what you'd find in like some sushi but I actually think it's actually kind of useless it just doesn't really have that sort of necessity, especially if you play with it. See, it, it, it just seems, it just seems odd. So we're at 34 salmon now. I know this is, this seems really odd to, I don't know if you're, I guess if you're me a few, uh, a few weeks ago before you uh, understood how this actually worked. I had no idea what Limitless Weapon did, I just played this game having fun. I never played with the um, ninjutsus. I never played with anything. Not Ninja Flame, not Black Ninja Flame, not Devil Jump, not Cicada Shell, not K9 Sense. I would not touch any of those ninjutsus. They were just too valuable. And when, I, when, you, when you use alchemy, you discover ways to create the big bomb. You know, the bomb that has like 99 stats on everything. And like you have like a hundred of them, you know that kind of bomb. We we all made that bomb. And like once you discover that bomb, nearly every single other bit of gear becomes useless. It becomes supplementary to the main event, the bomb. Although granted, the bomb was very much liable to put you um, into a lot of trouble if you weren't being careful throwing it. The amount of times I had an NPC startle me, and as a reflex, I do a backflip and throw the bomb, and then guess who's in the radius? Well, everyone on the goddamn planet, we're all taking a nap. Everyone's like lying down. 
and it's so funny too because the music stops <laughs> that battle music that plays as soon as you get into an engagement it just cuts everyone is asleep <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's that great to really bring them up to like, like the offensive bomb. Is it worth it to bring it up to like 99999? I don't think so. I think like 99 is actually like excessive. Where you really should be looking for a good ratio is something like 380 to about 440. You know, 380 I think is pushing it. You know, if you kind of are expecting to play with nothing but pure precision. Yes, but if you know you're gonna have like a few little hiccups, little hangups every now and then because of the way the AI works, then you know 400, 440 is gonna be a little bit more up your alley. Yes, the process in which we get lots of samurai tail. Why a samurai tail part one? Uh, good question. Why are we duplicating this item if we already acquired the currency? Um. We need to duplicate the samurai's tail because this is how we are going to supplement the daimyo's diet. Isn't it fascinating when you throw lizards, they kind of run in the line? But like, they don't really have intelligent AI, they sort of run. They don't even turn corners or anything. It's so weird. The geckos are alive. They're alive in your pocket. Think about that when you pick them up, you pick up a gecko and you just like shove it in your pocket and it's alive. Why does Go keep it alive? Why does he keep it alive? I don't know. I don't know. So why do we have the valuable geckos? So it's actually silly. I shouldn't even need to make eight in the future because like I'm, I'm realizing now that I'm not going to be making good potions. All I need is a, all I need is a da bomb, um, a da god bomb. And the god juice that's what i'm going to call them the good potions called uh the, the god juice and the bombs called the god bomb um i think the next time we do this run we only really need four four special valuable geckos on top of that not only do we need four special valuable geckos we can drop the amount of special mushrooms we need by about 30. Mm, I'm gonna actually push that to about like by about 50. We don't need to make the 400 style bomb. We don't need to make the 450 bomb and the 450 hour potion. We're just gonna make the bomb. So at this point, I actually should have cut cut it sheer because I have everything I need. In order to beat the run, I have everything I need. I am just being extra secure by doing this. Just throwing, throwing, throwing. So many special mushrooms. So, you know, you gotta tell me in your opinion. They look a little bit like dicks, the special mushrooms, right? They have like this weird, like, I mean, like, come on. Like, they have this weird kind of like penisy shape. And like, they're referred to as special mushrooms. <laughs> oh, don't touch that. That's my special mushroom. <laughs> Talk about Elizabeth Warren because American electoral politics always seems to get into my feed on Twitter. Elizabeth Warren, she is what is she like a, a senator or something? I don't know. I'm an idiot. That's
gonna Google search her, just so I know. Yes, Elizabeth Warren. She is a United States uh, senator. She's a senator from Boston. Uh, she was formerly a school professor, specializing in bankruptcy law. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. And uh, and and she's currently a member of the Democratic Party. And a progressive, as she describes herself. She is focused on consumer protection, economic opportunity, and a social safety net for all the Senate. Yeah, she's also going for the office of uh, El Presidente. Oh, yes, we've got our resources now. We're going to be making. Uh, we're going to be making that real shit. But first, you have to remember to take it out of here and then put it into the main inventory. Put it in the main inventory. Put it in the main. Nope, nope. Go back. <laughs> okay, you can you can buy your bombs if you want to. You can't sell anything yet. You have to put those items in the main inventory. You know, there we go. That's it. So we put those in. Excellent. Yeah, you can reassemble them if you want. You know, those are going to be moved, right? It's fine. It doesn't really matter. He's having fun. Yeah. No, you can put those back. That's good. So, let us begin the process. So first, we avoid this. <laughs> and then we proceed to spam these motherfuckers. One, and two, and three. And three. Oh! You, you remembered something, didn't you? Yes, all the stats were meant to be negative, you silly. Oh, I bet you also forgot to do one extra thing. You know what that was? That extra thing was to create even weed. You don't have even weed. You need even weed in order to make all the stats neutral. Oh, make the special mushroom. You can do it. Look at that, he's looking for the even weed. He's, he's like, oh, I, I must have left my wallet at home. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sir, do you happen to sell even weeds? Uh, no, we're actually out. Mexico, I have to go make some. So, what does he do? He goes with the special mushroom. Wash that thing out, it's filthy. Oh, like take the mushroom. Take the mushroom. Take the mushroom. Oh, I got the mushroom. Use the mushroom to make even meat. Do it. I know you want to. It's your favorite. Thing. Yes, now we have the even meat. We go back to point one, which is getting all our stats in the negative. Which is always so weird, because I don't know if you can just have them all negative like two and three. And like, because like, Anytime there's a zero, it always makes it plus, and I don't know why. It's so annoying. So annoying. Even it up. Even it up. These R2 get to the bottom. Swap it? No thanks. We're gonna be making the greatest, the god bomb. So we're at eight. Prepare to see that number rise up to fifty. Crazy the act, the amount of things that uh, Elizabeth Warren is involved with. She's doing a lot of different things. She's 70 years old, dude. She's 70. Years old. She's married twice, too. She's got two kids, including, including a new year. Huh. 
this is uh, kind of weird. Mm, just reading about Elizabeth Warren. What do I think about her? Uh, she's a liberal. That's annoying. Now that um, the, the table is, is coming to be set, we now need to get our utensils and buy the necessary orbs. And these orbs are going to be what we need in order to make the bombs. We have way more spheres than I actually think we need. <laughs> Let's rename Sylvia. This is another time wave. I can't believe I'm doing this like the style. Just like to dab on her, boy. <laughs> dabbing on the, dabbing on the other players. Dabbing on the other players. Check it out. Spell that name. Spell that name. It's not even a YouTube channel. It's like the Twitter that's attached to the YouTube channel. Anyway, you should follow me on Twitter at uh, at I do comments. And I also record parkour videos. So if you want to see me, you want to read some of my comments, which are very fun to read, or if you want to watch some parkour videos because they're that inspirational, uh, you should uh, follow me and you should subscribe. Uh, I normally always make such fun stuff. <laughs> I normally make such I sound like some. <laughs> saying like the concept of being LGBT is not a left-wing concept, then I think that's like that's a fair assessment to make because essentially you, what you're talking about is people's uh, gender sexuality expressions. I mean not gender, but just like their sexuality expressions. I guess gender for the time. And like it, it, it's so absurd to think that like all, every one of these things stems from some sort of leftist philosophy. And it, it's not the case that leftist philosophy has come to actually encompass many of these uh, other facets of life. Anyway, this is where it gets uh, a little bit lazy, a little bit crazy. Um, wow. We are just going to be balancing the thing. So that's the common. So right now, this is the process of balancing the daimyos respect you balance it up into when all the daimyo's reputations are five percent different there's like a five percent uh, five there's a five percentile difference between each daimyo i think that's how it said a five percentile difference we want to complete these missions for now actually because we want to balance this is gonna be easy though like we're not defending we're attacking we got the bomb we got the baby we're gonna see if we can get some ninjutsus what's what's here we have speed potion and strength sphere that sucks why can this game be so cruel like that why can't it give us good news oh why can't anybody bring me good news <laughs> Get this guy immediately. We're lucky there was no one on the sides that kind of got me out of it. So in order to sort of save ourselves, we're gonna go low, 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 low. What? Wow, that was actually great. 
And then these guys. Oh, oh, that was perfect. So now these guys are ready to. You're ready for death. We're gonna place these mines here. Oh, this guy's being annoying. Gotcha. Get bombed. I have to get out. It's like that and it's like this and like that and like that. Uh huh. It's like that and like this and like that. Uh huh. It's like this and like that and like. <laughs> I wish I remember what song that was. It definitely sounds like it's from the 90s, dude. Some people that genuinely believe. So this is what happens every single mission. Every single mission. What is so unique about Samurai's Tale? The Daniels love Samurai's Tale Part One. I don't know what it is about Part One, but uh, for some reason, it's one of those gifts that none of them will ever turn down. Samurai's Tale must be like. Um, I think that's a reference to Way of the Samurai, <laughs> like Where the Samurai One. Which was, uh, it's a really interesting game. One day I actually want to play it. It's such a weird game. I really want to see what it's like. Um, and if we give one of each to each daimyo, every one of the, each daimyo is going to get a plus one. So that's per day. After three days, that's essentially like doing a mission. Doing an extra mission for all three of them. Uh, and, and when you do a mission... And you have sent a gift on the same day. Instead of having a plus three at the end of the mission, you have plus four to plus five. No! Instant death. Da bomb. Da bomb. The, we, you need you need da bomb to help you manage like these levels. We don't want to be engaging with these levels too deeply past, uh, you know, securing that execution. The enemies are tough, they can ruin your day in a very short amount of minutes. So now we know where the uh, shining stones are. This happens again, I did not know what the mission was going to be, so I needed to save. So before we save, we send all the gifts, because we don't want to have to repeat this the next time we actually load the save. Why are you not saving? So if you get told that the about the whereabouts of the stones, but you don't know what that mission is because you're not familiar with the mission titles, what you should do instead, hey, Bear Slayer, that's a rare one, um, an hour 44, and we're only a third into the game, oh, I have to say, that's, that's actually not bad. That's pretty good. <laughs> Especially for this uh, percentage and this difficulty, that's pretty good. So, in order to know what the mission is, generally it's, in order to know, you have to look out for a mission given to you by the same person that told you where the whereabouts of the stone are, and at the same time, it has to be one of those missions that involves you taking an item and then leaving the scene of the crime, like a robbery or thievery, uh, or like a reconnaissance, something like that. You have to have some way to sort of pick up an item. It can't be something like an assault mission or an escort mission. Those you will never, ever, ever find the stone. So that's essentially what you want to do. This position over here, if you see those logs, that means it's on like the upper level. In order to avoid being seen by this guy, that guy will see you on pretty short if you decide to sort of run around. Them. <sighs> These are skips we use for tutorial of the game. They are no NPCs at this point. So you don't have to decide here. This is how you avoid getting seen by lower enemies. That space I looked into just then has an enemy that spawns in it, so you must be careful whenever you try to walk past that point. That goon will not see you if you make this jump. It's actually not difficult at all. So the treasure is just sitting over here. Um, it's not too difficult to really get it out of here because the goons that are in this area are... Uh, they don't have patrol patterns, so you can kind of just sort of go around them. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time trying to go in that direction. I, I don't believe it's really worth it. So, in order to save on health, uh, 
I need to make my We're going to suddenly head out the same way we came in. I don't know why I missed the staircase. It was literally right in front of me. I got lost. Here I am looking around, wondering where I'm going to go. But I think this was actually kind of interesting too, because I decided I am not going to wait. I did what is a very high level trick. I saw, I actually, I don't know if I've ever seen this before, but if you throw the grab hook at the item and you need to grab, it appears in your arms, you can go over the fence, chuck it over. Look how, how much time that can save. That's a, that's a, that's a nice trick. I love that trick. I have no idea where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going this way. I think I could technically actually go that way. I think I could. I actually think it'd be faster. It's actually a shame that um, I'm going back now. Can't believe that strap worked in a in a in a run. Do, 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 do. We killed this guy earlier before, so we have no trouble fighting him. And boom goes the dynamite. There we go. That is the sixth stone. We're really coming close to getting all eight stones. So, um, <laughs> did anyone ever think about, like, how those nurses on TikTok are, like, incredibly, incredibly cool, the way they've uh, presented their information about how they deal with that thing. But at the same time, I think, that, I think about, like, my mom was a nurse, and man, she is overworked, and, like, the institution is so fucked like almost everything about the way they run like the healthcare system is so weird like i mean it works i guess it's just oh my goodness it is the level of like control like it's it, it's, it's not good it's not good is what i'm saying uh you guys you must understand <laughs> Where are you going, young man? I didn't know where I was going. Runs along the side, jumps, grapple hook. Oh, that was precision. Now watch him get caught like a dumb dumb. Watch this. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and, and, what? exactly. Halt! Intruder! One. So the other guy hasn't fallen off. In case I didn't know that. Let's end there you are! Oh, oh, yeah. so <sighs> what a well placed bomb. I'm looking for the dodge. Looking for the dodge. I couldn't get it. I missed the kick. <sighs> I'm glad it's not Shinobi I'm dealing with right now. Now! Do it! Before I could grab him. That was so fast. Oof, we are being looped. And you can even see the corpse. It's flying. Come on! gets really dangerous. So we have to get this guy with the bomb. Keep an eye out, alright? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was They lost too fast. What? What? Intruder? Intruder? No. Intruder? Bang! <laughs> Intruder? Uh, I don't know. Oh, wow. How lucky can a man be? Good, Good night. <laughs> There's another one, there's a 
You know, we could have died just like Sometimes when you get nuked, the follow-up nuke hits you really well. Oh, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Intruder! You can halt! Why would you Beautiful dog. That's how it's meant to be. So I don't realize it, but one of the guys that was meant to be around where I was is escaped. What? What? Intruder? Intruder? <laughs> <laughs> Escaped, and I'm not doing anything about it. <coughs> mm, you've been weakened. My favorite. I love when they're weak. <coughs> yeah, end of Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ah. What were you thinking? You dumb truck. Uh, you'll get gotten. We'll get you. <laughs> Nurses on TikTok. Cancel culture kills careers unless you scroll at Johansson and then you fucking don't even notice anything happening to your career. And you're basically just like, wow, I'm really rich. I'm really, really rich. And everyone wants me. <laughs> I love everyone who approaches Stephen King after he made that weird tweet about like, Oh, I would never consider diversity in matters of art. Only quality. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, how can you, how can you sort of think about diversity as not being one of the elements that makes an art quality? It's, it's, it, it's, uh, to me, I think that's just, it's, it's, it's short-sightedness. It's short-sightedness. And, uh, upon reading <laughs> the criticism people have had him, it's all like, mm, uh, with all due respect, I'm afraid that the meritocracy could work only if the game weren't rigged. Uh, Mr. Stephen King, sir. <laughs> Everyone, like, no one wants to get on Stephen King's bad side. Because Stephen King hasn't really said it in a way that made him seem like he's some sort of, you know, asset. He, he just kind of, like, put it out there, you know, to make him seem, uh, to kind of, like, you know, have his little thing. Just put his blade inside you. In the chest. Give me that back. Give me that head. Why do you keep doing that? And I'll tell you why you keep doing that. So I'll throw an enemy, and then instead of actually booting him in the head, I will kick him in the air. This is one of the unfortunate issues about the um, the the function for the uh, low kick requires you to be in uh, partial to near full kick. <laughs> when it isn't pressed, you do a while standing attack. And your while standing attack is incredibly lucky. And your while standing attack, it, uh, it's the boot, which puts you. It gives you a bit of forward momentum, so it, it really messes with your ability to do the kick. Gosh, I wish he had a special unique execution for every item you held in the other end. I wish you had like special martial arts to be able to things you think like.
<laughs> oh, that noise it makes. Rubber, rubber, rubber. Give me those necks. I will slit them. Wow, did you see that at highly advanced spin? <laughs> the face they make for right. Oh my gosh, he does it again. Every time with this missed input. Don't make that face. I know you love it when that happens. Bruh. That's a serious bra moment. <laughs> My sister just watched the new Star, Star Wars movie. Yeah. It's a threatening letter. Yeah, let's do it. It's time to like get... Let's get up, let's get big boy, let's get Uzumushi, let's get Happy Tombo, you know we love to watch him die. This fight always makes me laugh, because this fight is actually incredibly easy. In most instances whenever I play this game, the AI does not dodge mines. They don't. They walk straight into them. But I've been getting like a lot of them doing a sort of path around uh, danger. Might be some sort of odd interaction between what sort of stuff they learned between when the first fight happened. Look at that, look at that. Why are you placing those landmines? Oh you, my goodness, why would you do that? Why are you doing that? You... Why would I take both sets of moms? What if you die accidentally? I mean, if I died accidentally, there'd be game over and I did not save for like a huge chunk of the game. I didn't save before. I didn't save after doing all that alchemy. I didn't do all that alchemy again. And... Yeah, I think at this point in the run, I was thinking to myself, I'm not gonna, if I die, I'm, I'm not gonna continue the run. I was really in it to win it. This first portion, I actually think it's such a waste opportunity that they put you in the location where um, uh, ninjutsus generally spawn, but then there's no ninjutsus. Jump up, go around, go over the house. That's right. No ninjutsus. If there's enemies there, you go down this way, you're gonna get spotted. And he sees you. Boom. <laughs> just, just hold the mission. It's right there. And yeah. And we're done. And we're done. Someone, anyone. Alright, this mission. You have Uzumushi and Happy Tombo. So, first things first, put four mines on the floor. Put your four mines on the floor. Put your four mines on the floor. Put, put, put your four mines on the floor. I want to see you put them on the floor. Yeah. That's not how you do it. Yeah, goose. Wow, the amount of life. Did it? 
do 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 and that's how you get the kill. Do 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 and that's how you get the kill. It's so easy, even a 98 year old grandmother can do it. I'm 94, not 98. Whatever, grandma. Anyway. <laughs> There you go, so that's the Uzumushi fight. We're gonna change model. Oh, it's not necessary, you know what I'm saying? We don't need to change model yet. Yeah, I don't need to change model yet. Alright, time to balance bits. That Ichijo needs buffing and scrubbing. Another mission starts. Yes. Are you ready for the mission? I am. I was born ready. They told me the mission is going to begin soon. And I said, good. <laughs> I want to play it. So then I did. Why are you oh right, I have to loot for this mission. And that's it. It's all done. Time to head time to head home. I don't know, do people like watching the model switch? Do people like seeing it? Just look at this picture of a police constable in a shop in South Africa. And I think to myself, man, fucking pigs. Fucking pigs, that's what I'm saying. Cops showed up in East New York, Brooklyn, because the swiper forward action is giving out free swipes to people to protest racist policing, and the criminalization of poverty. Protesters keep swiping and chanting away. Damn, that's incredible. I fucking hate them pigs. They're just unbelievable, these guys. You know, is there ever a moment to actually do proper police work? Or do we have to be a bunch of goons? Anyway, this guy's dead. A couple of mines. Set him right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he just sort of burps when he loses. I know he's growling. The way his growl comes out, it sounds like a burp. Like, So the city literally did a calculation 
But uh, if they paid a bunch of cops, it would be cheaper than allowing people to get away with fees. Chimp took down, um, uh, what's this piece of shit name? Stefan Molyneux's Twitter account. Fuck, dude, I'm such a petty little piece of shit. I hate Stefan Molyneux. Every time I see him on camera, uh, man, he's always saying, like, some of the most horrible stuff, and he's, like, hiding behind, like, this facade of, like, oh, I'm such a big smarty. I, I think about these things. I know facts. He knows bloody nothing man and it's so frustrating because like you'd like to think that maybe he's just like a grifter that he's just you know trying to make a bit of money but he's not grifting dude like he actually what believes the... this stupid bullshit. i just wish so ishijo was a bit more reliable no food, no food. Well, that shit. yeah that's what i'm saying get out of here let's do this that's a pass that's nice. <laughs> uh, good grief. What, what is there? What is there? I guess, uh, you know, I'll talk about um, mm. this little cutscene there. Uh, in that moment, in the cutscene, you see Go was fighting against the twins well actually they're not twins they're triplets there was a third sister and she's dead go killed her it was go's fault the third sister of the ninja girls is dead so they have been trying to get revenge on him so much they want to kill go they need his guts and in that process, um, one of their plans was to take the form of the, the, the Robin, Kinu, the Canary, I think actually, Kinu the Canary. They'll be taking the form of Kinu the Canary, and then whilst under the form of Kinu, they set up a trap in which Go will get smushed. That was a mush Unfortunately, that's not what happens, uh, because the other sister gets smooshed in the whole process. And, um, <laughs> yeah, our Kinu saved. Uh, their Kinu, she died. So, in that cutscene, <laughs> she's, like, assembled this disguise to look like Kinu. And then she's like, so, uh, what do you think? And she's like, hmm, yeah, you know, it's gonna work. It's really a lovely costume. It's like, yeah. And then they start, and then, like, they just have, like, this weird commentary where they start talking about, like, how the boobs on the costumes, she's just, like, smaller, bigger. Yes. No. And then, like, just kind of, they just kind of end it by saying, hmm. It's a shame they're fake. <laughs> it's a shame they're fake. It's a shame they're fake. I wonder how that came off exactly in the original Japanese. Probably something along that line. Gosh, the people that made this game were a bunch of weirdos. You wake up in strange places. Nikishi Pavilion, Honcho Shimayaki, Shimazayaki, and then you think to yourself, what the hell is going on? 
how the hell do I keep getting to these places without any issues? I do wonder. It'd be kind of cool, like, before the mission starts, instead of him kind of just jumping from the sky. Like, you can kind of see him naturally come in the area, either by, like, dressing up like a farmer, and then just sort of throwing the farmer gear to the side. And He's a ninja. <laughs> Alright, so they look they look fairly balanced. Let's let's start uh, bur burning through these. if there's a faster way to deal with the section because it is extensive you spend so much time monitoring the reputation here here's where it really counts because you cannot you you just cannot have them uh two separate because the moment the game triggers the next portion this uh, won't be easy you need them to start having discussions at least what do you do? Things. I'm throwing them, there's something over here, I'm wondering what the hell am I meant to do to get these guys to stand still? So what you do, when you stand still, they stop in the sky. Oh, so you can stop in this dead, then you throw it. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just gonna avoid that. I don't think anyone needs to see that. Let, let's not kill the merchant. Let's not get caught. Look at the I always wonder if you position yourself in front of the cat, can it give you a speed boost? I bet it can. Cats have pace, dude. Man, they will transform into cats and be so sick. So, it's time for the second Zaji fight. And we know how this fight's gonna go. It only really goes one way. <laughs> it only ever really goes one way, doesn't it? <laughs> but you do that. Then you do the backflip, throw the bomb. They do. She's absolutely out cold. Place the mine, place the mine, place the mine. Get the fuck out of there. Ah, boosh, 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 boosh. Simple. Done. Easy. It's not even a problem, man. Zaji yeah. five two, done. So if I understand the run correctly, if I understand exactly the run correctly, we are currently in the third. Phase. We are. We are in the. We are. We are in the fourth phase. We're still technically in the fourth phase here. Um. We are waiting for a letter that says talks of peace.
absurd. This is very absurd. Defending the garden is such a something else. So the talks of peace process. It ends once we become the bear and then we go from bear into human mode. Gosh, how great would this game have been if you could transform into the different animals at any point during the match. Like you'd be like a ninjutsu. Sloppy, but it's okay. It's okay. And then after you quit the mission, all the mines are gone. Because you left them you left them at the spot. You left 25 of the most expensive mines. So they slide over them like that. You throw the axe when they have like a certain amount of momentum upon that point. I'm curious. Barbarians? Barubra? Deported. That's how it is in these hoods. We don't play games. No, my homie. It. I caved in. I got TikTok. I never thought the day would come where I'd be making TikToks, but here I am. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck, man? Yeah, my homie got this thing like a while back, and I thought to myself, damn. What are you even looking for on this website? What are you even, what are you even looking for on something like TikTok? What are you even looking for? There's nothing on that side I want to see. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I want to see on that side. It matters about what toilet trash I can leave on that side. How can I best do it with my feces? I'm a little over dramatic. I immediately hate the animal. This app. Yeah. God, this is the moment where you, you have to choose your interests. It is horrendous. What is up with this app? Here we go.
system. What a movie, what a movie Friday. <laughs> Look at these kids making dance videos and this shit. Actually, oh my goodness. Fucking hell. Yeah. Satisfied with like its kills. It's like, when are you gonna be happy? When are you gonna be happy, Damien? When are you gonna be happy, Damien? Let's have a look at the stats, please. Okay, no, I guess it doesn't matter. You really know the stats are. My wound. <laughs> Look at the man skip. Look at the man skip. Look at the man skip missions. Yes indeed, yes indeed. A man does his run. You should know the goal. Why are you bad? Why are you bad at life? It's a great question. I ask that to myself and far too many times. I don't think I'm that bad at life. I'm very lucky though, that's for damn sure. All right. <laughs> so 
So there's really not much to do in the run until it's over. Any rations going? website is really millennial TikTok. Oh. What is it called? You're not gonna get away. At the end of Come closer, my dear. Just couldn't. Oh, just my imagination. Don't move. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the skipping, the skipping. Can a man skip runs? Yes, he can. Can a man skip? Yes, he can. Skip lots of runs. Da da da. Can a man just skip? Hmm. <laughs> uh. Finally, and this is when I include all the other minions. 
Put the Yojimbo down. Spikes are leaving now. Essentially, the Yojimbo are suicidal and they will walk into nearly every single day in order to go to put down unless you find a way to restrict the amount of danger they can track on. That's why we're putting the spike a little bit in the front here. Uh, they're still gonna find some use, you know, as the insurance fight begins, but it's definitely not going to be uh, any. Any more deadly for my Jimbo. Hey there, Jimbo, it's your dad. Just wondering if you know you, you still love Papa. Father's Day's coming up, and you know I'm really thinking about taking that trip to the casino. You know your dad loves the casino so much. So what do you say, Jimbo? Just give us a little bit of that college fund. Come on, kiddo. You keep telling me about that art school and stuff. You just learn it all from YouTube. You don't need to go to a school. Just let Papa tap into that sweet, sweet college fund. Come on, kiddo. I swear I can win. I can win like a lot. I just need. I just need a loan up front. I'll pay you back uh, with interest. Come on. Look, there's a lot of guys with some very, very serious, serious muscle, and and they need me to pay them back. Okay, you understand? I a lot of money I owe to them. I don't actually get that money. Yo man's gonna be in trouble, Jimbo. Yo man's gonna he may not see the end of this Christmas. And that's why, um and that's why uh they call me Jimbo. What? Is it time for the whales? I Da 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 Alright, so that was the cutscene, Rokudo Valley, nothing happens. Okay, okay, okay. It's not the whale's eye yet. What the hell? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. What do I have to do to get you to get to the next stage? I don't get it. It is annoying. I have to keep playing. Alright. And we are going to be playing in this instance. Let's check the news. I just want to see what the stats are. Okay, 48, 48, 48, 47. Looks good. Play the semi generals escaping the cart. Do that really quickly because we have a dub bomb. And let's go. Goodness gracious me. Only. You know, only an hour left until uh, the run is truly done, son. Next snap is not great. So, uh, uh. Wow, that's everyone's throat slit. Next snap. Let's get done. Thank <laughs> you. 
fight me. You, I knew it. Where is it? Something smelling too about long. this. Here I come. I've been waiting. Food. Any rations, Any rations going? going? Any rations?
time to
Well, that's it. Thank you everyone for watching. That's the end of the run. 2 hours 43 in game time, 3 hours 30 total game play time, maybe 3 hours 2 on the full save at the end of it. Um, I'm going to be doing some more runs in the future. You can subscribe to me at this channel, that's Timmy Jim, or you can subscribe to my other channel where I do parkour, that's at Joseph T. James, or Mr. J or uh, youtube.com slash user slash Joseph T. James. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Tim Tumblr, Twitter, and even Twitch, all at Joseph T. James, where, you know, we play games really fast, and we also talk about funny things. And that's it. Enjoy your day.